Hi, for this recording, we are, I'm going to show you how to compute the lower Riemann sum of a function, which is f of x equal to 1 plus x for x between 0 and 1. And when x equal to 1, the function is 1. Show that the lower Riemann sum is this expression. We are also given the upper Riemann sum. Now, the standard partition is from 0 to 1 over n, 1 over n to 2 over n, 2 over n to 3 over n, and so on until n minus 1 over n to 1. They ask you whether the function is integrable or not. So to do this, first thing is draw the graph first. Now the function most of the time behave like y equal to 1 plus x. Alright, except when x equal to 1, the, last, the value of x to y is 1. To find a lower Riemann sum, I need to know the interval of sub interval of standard partition is 1 over n. And then I'm going to need to find out the lowest value, smallest value of y in each interval. So on the first interval, on the first interval here, the smallest value of of y is m1, this is 1. Okay, then you move on, so m1 is 1. Then you move on to the second interval. So the second interval, in this case, is here. The smallest value of y and you can see the value is on the left end is m2 and this is when x equal to 1 over n so y equal to 1 plus x so y equal to 1 plus 1 over n this is m2 then we we'll move on to the third interval so third interval is from 2 over n to 3 over n the value of y the smallest value of y in the third interval is this called m3 here yeah, this is when x equal to 2 over n so you put x equal to 2 over n, the y equal 1 plus 2 over n, this is m3. In general, observing this pattern, mi equal to 1 plus i minus 1 over n. This is valid for i equal to 1 to n minus 1. Except for the very last one. The last interval is here. The value of, smaller value of y is mn is 1 here. Okay, so once you establish all the increment of the value of y, now we can find out the lower Riemann sum f of pn, so it's summation of mi delta xi. Now I break them out into two pieces, sum from i equal to 1 to n minus 1 plus the last term. The reason is because mi are different, especially the mn. Now I break up, mn is 1. So I got this, m is 1, and then m i is 1 plus i minus 1 over n for i equal to 1 to n minus 1. And then I multiply them out in the first in the first sum. This is sum from i from 1 to n minus 1. Right? Sum from i from 1 to n minus 1. Uh, of 1 over n, 1 times 1 over n is 1 over n. Then i minus 1 times 1 over n square. As n is a common factor, you pull out the 1 over n square, sum of i minus 1. Now let's do the calculation on the next page. So notice that the first term and the last term add together is going to be 1. How do I do that? Because sum of 1 over n for i equal 1 to n minus 1 is summing of 1. Pull out a factor 1 over n. And then the first term and last term put together. All right. So this one, the first term and the last term put together. You'll find that this is n minus 1 over n plus 1 over n because summing up 1 from i from 1 to n minus 1 is n minus 1. And for the second term, when you, when you sum them up, notice that when i equal to 1, you get 0. i minus 1 gets 0. i equal to 2. 2 minus 1, you get 1. i equal to 3, 3 minus 1, you get 2. So you notice that when you have this, when you come to i equal n minus 1, n minus 1 minus 1, and get i n minus 2 now. So how do we sum up this thing? So to sum up this thing, you using that the first term is 0. So you can use the first term is 0. Last term is n minus 2. So first term plus last term divided by 2 times the number of terms. So all together, the n minus 1 term. 
So you multiply by n minus 1. Okay, so this is because we have an arithmetic progression. You can sum arithmetic progression in this way. So let's find the sum now. So you get 1 plus n minus 2 n minus 1 over 2 n squared. So multiply out n minus 2 times n minus 1 is n squared minus 3n plus 2. And then 1 is 2n squared over 2n squared. Adding up, we got 3n squared minus 3n plus 2. Therefore, the lower sum, the above sum is 3n squared minus 3n plus 2 over 2n squared. Now, if you are given that upper remaining sum is 3n plus 1 over 2n, lower remaining sum is f of pn, 3n squared minus 3n plus 2 over 2n squared. So let n go to infinity, you find that upper Riemann sum as n goes to infinity is equal to 3 over 2 as n goes to infinity. And the lower Riemann sum as n goes to infinity also is 3 over 2. Now you find that this, after dividing, you get 3 over 2 there. So, because the upper remaining sum and lower remaining sum are equal, we say that f is integrable, and the integral from 0 to 1 is 3 over 2. That's the end of the recording.